The storyboard is one of the most difficult exercises in the design sprint. In this video, we're going to show you exactly how to do it. The storyboard video you're about to watch right now is from our Design Sprint online course. So we're just giving you a free preview of inside the Design Sprint online course, and we're gonna show you exactly how to create the storyboard. If you're interested about this course, if you're interested in running your own Design Sprints, down below in the description, you'll see a link to a one and a half hour web class on how to run and sell Design Sprints. You should definitely check that out afterwards if you're interested. While watching this video, if you have any other questions around storyboarding or around Design Sprints, make sure you let us know in the comments. Hope you like this video. We're up to the final exercise in the whole group workshop part of the sprint, the very end of the second day, the storyboard. So this is going to look something like this with um, you as a facilitator, or we also suggest, and we do here at AJ and Smart, often have a second person uh, actually doing the drawing while the facilitator is then free to kind of moderate the group, moderate the discussion and really guide what's happening and they, do, they don't have to have their back to everyone while they're drawing. So if you have someone in the group that um, enjoys drawing, likes drawing, can sometimes be tricky to actually get someone to volunteer, but try and get someone to just be the scribe of the artist um, collecting what everyone's comments and, and making the actual storyboard. So the actual exercise, we break into two parts to make the uh, basically give a sense of achievement and help you feel like you're really getting through the whole storyboard by doing it in a few passes a few phases so part one is first drawing eight we usually draw um, eight boxes or cells on the whiteboard you can have even a couple of extra ones if you want but we're going to now try and translate those six post-it notes from the user test flow into really what might happen on each screen or in each real step along the way so often a step on a post-it note might translate into more than one screen. So we give ourselves a few extras here. Then place those six post-it notes inside the boxes. Um, and you can leave a few spare ones if you think maybe this post-it note might take up a bit more space. Um, but you can always move them around, so don't stress about this. Place the post-it notes inside. And then this is a really key step is looking back around the room where you should still have the concepts all around you, um, including the winning concept, the one that you actually chose to go ahead with, and see if you can find um, drawings and parts of drawings that you can actually reuse, that maybe already have good illustrations of something that's in one of these post-it notes. And the trick here is that you don't only have to be limited to the winning concept. There might be a drawing in a concept that wasn't chosen, but that's still a good representation of the idea that's going on on this screen. For example, a login screen might be the same in different things or a great drawing of a graph or a chart. You can just pull it out of another concept. So start getting the group to find the drawings, cut them out and find the things that really might already work and save us some time not having to draw them all over again in the storyboard and stick them up onto the whiteboard so you've already starting to get half the job done already before you've even had to draw anything new. So this is all about avoiding unnecessary effort by using what's already there. And it also actually helps give your team, the team members, a sense of uh, achievement and validation when they've drawn something, even if it didn't get chosen, that it's now being used in the final storyboard. So it can really help every, everyone feel included and invested in the, the final product, the final prototype. The, perp the whole purpose of the storyboard is really to leave no open questions, really get all the detail out now. Now that we've got this, the basic steps that we did in the user test flow, we now want to get all the detail out so that the next day when the prototypers really sit down to build that prototype, they don't have to answer anything or look anything up or get some information that they don't have already. They can just build the prototype. So this is really important to get all the detail in. And it's really important also, even though you're wanting to add detail to the high level parts of the concept that we haven't really fleshed out yet, be very careful not to add any new ideas here or add anything that's unnecessary. Like if you're not testing the login flow for the product, you probably don't need to draw and build a login screen 
you can just skip that and pretend it's there. Uh, so don't add things that the prototypers will have to make more effort to design if it's not an important part of your test. No brand new ideas and nothing unnecessary. Now you can go into part two of the storyboard where you fill out the rest and draw the rest. So filling in the missing pieces by drawing around them or taking a drawing that's already there and really building on it and using that as a base. So it's a great idea to start with the first cell, the first box. That's often a simple one like a Google page, someone Googling to find out about a laundry service or maybe it's an email where someone's told about a new product or an ad on Facebook. It's usually something that you've seen before and you can really just quickly draw again. Then it's a great idea to go to the very last box in the last cell and draw what's there. And that also might be quite simple. It might be the final um, clicking to buy something or confirmation or sharing something with a friend, that final step that's confirming that the user um, might actually use, subscribe or share that service with someone. And that's usually something that you might know what that looks like as well. So doing those first two helps the team feel a sense that they're actually getting somewhere, they're actually moving along and they're already filling out those two simple cells. And then it's a lot easier to see what happens in between as well. Then finish drawing the rest. And there might be one or two screens in here that have most of the heavy stuff in them, uh, the, the key screens we call them, the ones that are really showing what the product is. So in our example, it might be the marketing page and then the checkout page. So these ones might take a little bit more time. But try and keep your team time boxed using the suggested timings in our, your facilitators checklist that you got with this class and really kind of keep them time boxed and maybe use some time boxes that are a bit shorter than what you hope for so that you can extend them a little bit and give them give the, your team a bit of extra time but keep them time boxed so they really keep moving fast. Another great tip for this storyboarding activity which can sometimes be stressful and keeping the whole team really engaged uh, can be a really tricky thing to do because people start debating and discussing particular uh, features and ideas is giving people side tasks. So if one or two people start really debating what might happen on a particular screen or what copy needs to go there or where, what order things should go in, you could give them a marker and say, great, you two work on that screen while we move on with the others and then we'll come back and then we'll get a lot more done. So this can help people. Uh, it's hard to keep everyone just paying attention to one thing for a long period of time. So giving people those jobs or telling like other side task examples are go and look up some copy that you might have on your marketing page already or sit down and write some copy and then come back to us. This really helps get more done and keep everyone engaged and that feeling of investment in what's going on as well. And another great tip is delegating the drawing. Like I said before, find someone in the group that can do the actual drawing for you so that you can be facing the group and not having to have your back to them and really watching for things like people getting disengaged or having debates on the side and you can then allocate them side tasks and things like that. It, it can be really tricky to keep the group engaged and active and it's a really important thing to do for this very last exercise where it's really the final thing that that group will do together on this day. So really keeping people motivated, engaged and excited and invested in what they're doing is super important to, for you as a facilitator and for the team to have that sense of achievement together at the end. So there you go, that's the storyboard. Obviously, there's a lot of other exercises around it. Um, if you have any other questions, let us know in the comments. And like I said earlier, down below, you can see a link in the description to a one and a half hour web class on how to run and sell your own design sprints if that's what you're interested in running them yourself. Don't forget, we have a weekly podcast called the Product Breakfast Club podcast on all podcasting apps. We have daily vlogs on Instagram on our AJ and Smart channel. We also have a newsletter you can check out down below, which is a bi-weekly product innovation newsletter where you can get the most up-to-date product design news, all the kind of industry stuff that you might wanna know that comes to your email every two weeks, no spam, no bullshit. Finally, we also have a super popular Facebook group called Innovation Hackers, where designers all around the world and innovation specialists all around the world come to share their links, come to ask questions, and come to share their stories about their work in product design. So definitely check that out. Have a great one, bye-bye.